available job growth across the U.S. slowed last month in a sign the labor market may be cooling this spring. The Labor Department says employers added 175,000 jobs in April. That's the smallest monthly job creation recorded since October of last year. Unemployment increased marginally to 3.9 percent. It's hovered above 3.5 percent since last summer, but remains under 4 percent. President Biden says this jobs report shows, quote, the great American comeback continues, but acknowledged there is more work to do on the economy. CBS News senior business and tech correspondent Jolyn Kent is here to dig into this with us. Jolyn, it's good to have you. So what should we make of this jobs report? Is it good or bad news for the economy? Elaine, this is still a strong jobs report, even though it missed Wall Street's expectations. The most important things to look at here are twofold. First, the market, the labor market, is cooling off right now. And that may be a good signal for the Fed when it comes to their desire and their hope to sometime cut rates this year. The other, the other two little data points that I have been watching is wage growth. Wage growth moderated last month in April. It sank to 3.9 percent year over year. The other thing I'm looking at is the average number of hours worked per week. That actually went down a bit. And so that's signaling that the demand for labor right now is going down a little bit. So overall, still a very strong jobs report and still shows that the labor market is in a healthy place, but certainly a cooling off that so many economists have been telling me that they were looking for and expecting in this April jobs report, Elaine. Well, help us understand, although job growth slowed, the unemployment rate ticked up. Why is that figure in particular? particular, not really wavered for several months now. Yeah, that's been holding pretty steady. We've seen layoffs remain steady. Unemployment claims remain pretty steady. And so as a result, it seems like a lot of companies are just sitting and holding. We've seen some minor layoffs across certain industries. But overall, the idea for so many companies when it comes to investing in additional jobs is to wait and see. It's really expensive to hire in a tight labor market. And so the idea is to kind of hold. But we are seeing significant hiring in the healthcare industry, which is really interesting. So I'll be watching on that front as well. Well, the central bank has held interest rates steady at its last six meetings. Is that about to change? Well, we'll see. We expected the Federal Reserve to hold, which they did this week. Uh, and, of course, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell has said they are willing to hold as long as necessary to get inflation down. So we'll see how this jobs report factors into their decision. But the committee is pretty unanimous in, in their feeling about holding interest rates. The big question is if and when they cut this year. The idea of three interest rate cuts is long gone. We're probably going to see something more like one interest rate cut this year. The question is, does it come in September? Maybe it comes in December. June seems to be relatively unlikely because inflation, the price that you're paying at the gas pump at the grocery store for your auto insurance remains sticky and stubborn and high, and that remains a pain point for people. And so we'll see with as wage growth ticks down a little bit, I don't think that that's going to move the opinion of the Federal Reserve. Uh, it would have to be a major, you know, labor soften, uh, softening in the labor market to actually push them in that direction on that data point alone. So we'll see how this reads in uh, for the Fed, but certainly a lot of people hoping to get into the housing market this yes. summer. But if you're a saver, good news is that those interest rates remain high. And as Jill would advise, <laughs> you know, you're going to make money if you put money in your high yield savings account. Yeah. You know, but you mentioned inflation, Jolene, it being sticky. It's, it's a pain point. That's certainly something that I think a lot of Americans are feeling right now. And they may be wondering, what exactly needs to happen before people see some relief? How does the U.S. get there? Yeah, that's a great question because we've had sustained higher interest rates for a long time now, right? We've been sitting at over 5% from the Fed. Now, the prevailing feeling at the Fed level is hold these interest rates until we see inflation move down meaningfully to 2%, which is their goal. But there is a little chatter among economists and one Fed governor, Michelle Bowman, saying, should, is this working? And should the Federal Reserve raise their interest rates instead of cutting them? Now, that's that's certainly not fully on the table at the Fed, but the idea is that people are still spending. Demand is still pretty good. We are seeing some numbers soften, like, you know, hours worked and, and wage growth. But what will it take to bring inflation down? And especially, you know, it's, of course, really painful to feel inflation at this sticky level because even though it's come down from its heights of 2022, 
things are still so expensive and it's compounding. It's not like prices have gone down, just they're going up at a slower rate. So we can see that pain point for so many consumers, especially lower income workers on that front. But this jobs report, just another data point for the Fed to consider as they try to figure out what to do about interest rates this year. But that really is the big one when it comes to how to manage inflation and how to manage the cost of borrowing money, Elaine. All right, Jolene Kent breaking it all down for us, Jolene. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lane.